Alright, I'm gonna show you how to make one of these, so stay tuned. My printer is just going at it, so he'll be making a light rumbling noise in the background. Today, I wanted to show off my skull cape. So this is all 3D printed. And then I, what I did is I covered it with a more ABS to make it a bit stronger. So this is a lot stronger on the outside. It's not just 3D printed, it's also been coated over probably about five times to make it super, super strong. And then I kitted out the inside with a little bit of padding so that I can wear this on my head. This fur is just some scrap fur that I had left over from different costumes I was working on. So I put it together and made it into a nice cape. And then of course, and he did a tail, so I threw a tail on that as well. The stretchy part I just put on the back of my head. And then it sits like that. And this can also slide over my face. I see through these little bits here. <laughs> you can also take it off a chip on your shoulder and walk around casually like this. Oh yeah, and I'm in the middle of dyeing my hair. That's why it's like super blonde here and then a little bit green there. I'll be dyeing the whole thing deep teal today, probably tonight at some stage. I'm going to another festival, uh, Kiwi Burn on Wednesday. So I want to make my new one. Hopefully, fingers crossed, in time for that. First, you will need the fur. The story behind this fur is I was contacted by distinctivefabric.com and they made me an offer of free fur if I do a video with it. So I thought, heck, I'm wanting to make one a, a new headdress cape, so why not use the fur that I get from them for the video? They also gave me vibrant fur. So this one's also multi-toned, like the brown, but it's got all this interesting orangey kind of a blend in it. They are, I guess in a way, sponsoring this video. So I picked this one out, knowing that in the future I wanted to make a version 2 of this. Ye fur. You will also need your 3D printed parts. <gasps> do, 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 do. I left them overnight and it didn't screw up. Look at it. That looks really cool, look at that. And it is only at... 37%. Hey, look who's done. Wow. Look at these details and they look so great. Half of the skull finished. Now I just need to print this half. Of course, I've got to print the fangs out. So the fangs click into these little nubs. <laughs> look at it. It survived the thinning. Ah, look at that. Ooh. I'm so proud of you, son. Can I just... Can I just... Oh no, there we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Touch. So then your head, your head fits in here. <laughs> no, I have to heat. I'll have to heat up the edges. The um, these skinny edges, I can heat up and kind of pull outwards. Ooh. So these parts were printed in two segments, and now I'm going to be attaching them together at last. I will probably use super glue. And as you can see, if I zoom up closer, there are lots of imperfections. So I will get my blowtorch out and kind of push some of those imperfections down. And when I coat over this with melted down ABS, it will hopefully smooth some of these lines out. Once it's smoothed out a bit, I will then paint it a little to give it that more realistic look. That's the one. And then I'll probably put a few more layers on. So all in all, I think I'll probably coat this five to six times as well, just to make sure this looks really cool and sturdy and whatnot. Oh, I will also need to get it up. Uh, this, your head's supposed to fit in here, but this is a little bit too narrow. So what I will do is heat this all up quite warm 
and sh I can stretch this out so the plastic will bend outwards. Then that should be able to fit on my head. Oh well, let's get started. I'm gonna first make the pattern, get the pattern off of this one so I can cut out the same fabric size of the fur. This is the shape we want for the current mask, so let's try and make a duplicate. I'm gonna grab my ginormous roll of paper. <laughs> and then we will lay this out and stick them over the top. Like a saw. This one's not very symmetrical, so I'm just gonna... I'll do both of them, but then I'll fold the paper in half and cut it out so it's symmetrical this time around. It doesn't have to be super perfect. Marking it up. Just eyeball it. Oh yeah, this is the only part that's a little bit tricky, and that's the head area. So I don't know how much fur I'm going to be needing for the head. So I might just make that quite large. This is where the tail will be. It will just be a smaller tail though. Keep. Scissors at and cutting around the head for me. Cutting, 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 cutting. Oh, actually, I'm supposed to fold this in half, first, aren't I? And then cutting it out roughly. Hello. Oh, hello there. You have delivery. We have a delivery from the postman. <laughs> from. Where did this come from? Sivvy. Oh. And I and yeah. Tommy Beast and Chester. Looking at and it, it looks like this, this should be around Christmas. Um, I'm gonna say it's from Christmas. Well, what's in it then, Mr. Postman? <laughs> this one says, Happy Holidays to Sparky. Hope you will like some of the candy, Sivvy. Okay, well, I guess I will just... Open? Finally. Oh my god, it's an orange thing. So we want to find the Freya... Freya milk and chocolate. So this is from, where was it from again? Norway. Norway Norwegian. Yeah, Norwegian candy. Norwegian. They have little birds on them. Quite like dense. So then it's the egg. Is this the smashing egg? Yeah. It comes pre-smashed when you send things to me from a different country. Yeah. Oh wow. The smell is like super fragrant. Mm. We'll call it even though. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the same as the ones we got in New Zealand. What do you do with my name, Dad? I'm from Anya. Yeah, Jeff. My name's Jeff! I'm gonna get so chocolated out here. That's three chocolates already. This one's chocolate. This one I'm pretty sure is chocolate. This one actually looks really interesting. Julie Marksipan. What's the next one? The Jet Bar. Wow, you took a big bite. Oh, a little gonna, bite. It's gonna be a little bite. <laughs> Pretty sure that went the same. <laughs> Just as good as the Mars bar. Kit Kat tried to stop us, but they lost. The perfect chocolate when taking yeah, a hike in the mountains. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> That's super hard. Hello? Do we want to go splitsies? I don't know if you can. No, you can't go splitsies. You can't go splitsies? Is it solid? A little bit, not too bad. Oh, damn! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It feels like glass breaking in my mouth. Goodbye! Oh, I like these. Look at these. Oh, they're crunchy. Mmm. Oh, what is that? Is that flavor? Malt? It's pleasantly different from anything I've had. Maize snack covered with milk chocolate. Oh, maize. Cracker chocolate. Marsipan. This one's super weird looking. Look at it. It's a pig with a ribbon around it. It looks like some weird tofu thing. It's just a pig made out of marzipan. Can't use a snout. Poor piggy lost a snout. That is weird. That is That's really strange. Really weird. Do you want any more? No, that looks weird. <laughs> I love <a> squish. <laughs> what do? They're probably crying in horror, being like, "What are you doing to our food?" Squishy play-doh. Snowball. <laughs> I got it in the water! <laughs> now what are we gonna drink? We can just drink this marzipan water. <laughs> oh wow. Is it a snowman? It's a snowman. Some well endowed woman. Oh wow, the, the women have boobies on the- The women have boobies. The women have boobies. Hey! Can you see the boobies on the lady? There you go, see? <laughs> I like them, there you go. Hockey pulver super salt. Something that never dies after the 90s. What is it? I don't know. Zoom up on it. It's like bad makeup. Mm. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? This is disgusting. Did you try it? Yeah, and but I keep going back. <laughs> oh man, there's like so much salt in that. Is it like just salt? No, it's got sugar in it too. It's like salt and sugary. 
Ew! No! Put it away! Away! That is super gross. I need some of those, uh, what do you call that again? That pig thing? Okay. No. Oh, no. No. No to hockey puck. Oh, no! Don't! It'll probably go everywhere! <laughs> Help me. Help. Man, look at that. Isn't that that cool? I can't believe that I'm going to eat this whole. Um, I'm going to go wash my hands. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Pushme! Bye bye! Bye bye! bye. Alright, the first round's gone now. Thank you so much, uh, Sivvy. That was really cool that you sent me a gift for Christmas. We leave on Wednesday to this uh, hippie festival, so we'll bring this with us and then other people there can enjoy them. Back onto that tutorial, then, right? Pattern for the cape part. Fold it in half. You can't really see it on the camera, but me being here, I can kind of see where both of the lines are drawn. So I'm just cutting in between those lines. I cut the tail off for now because I'm not gonna be, I'll do the tail separately if I do do it. Bend her pattern. So hopefully that should hug me quite well. This part goes around your neck. Well, that part comes around your belly. And this part will be glued to the inside of the school. This looks like a really creepy looking <laughs> gingerbread bag. Obviously you want the fur to be going this way. This is also a good time to draw on your pattern if you want to break the colors up at all. So this one, he has a black stripe down his middle. So if you wanted to do something like that, that's when you would draw on your pattern and you cut it out separately. So that he will have a black stripe. So what I'm thinking about doing now is having this being the brown fur and then these arrows here and this line down the middle which I'll uh, mirror over and cut the whole thing out. I'm thinking about doing that one. This beautiful teal color that I have. So this is a deep teal which I absolutely adore and then the rest of the body can be this one. It should match up. Let's have a look. Together like that. Yeah. I mean, it's violent, <laughs> but it looks awesome. Let's just maybe draw the tail out one more time so I can add the new color that I want to do. Something like that. Now that he's in half, I can just cut right up that line that I made. So he's going to have a teal stripe down the middle of his tail. I'm going to give the tail two sides. He's going to be fluffy on the back and the front. Cape though, I'm only going to do it uh, furry on one side, not both sides, otherwise I'll overheat and die. I'm not gonna bother trying to cut those out on the other side as well. When I draw out the pattern on the fur, I'll just flip that side over and draw the markings onto it. Finished cutting out all the pieces. And these little guys will be hand sewn in there. So it'll have eight of those. That's the tail. There's the tail of the stripe down the middle. So this piece will go here. That can just be machined so that won't be so hard. Same with the back piece. I'll machine sew this into here.
professional. Professional. He got a little bloop toe. It's a bloop. And then the back is just nothing. And then when it gets stuffed, it's gonna be a nice little curve. Yeah, it'll puff, it'll puff out a little. Bit. Yeah. It's Maria! Oh no! <laughs> and there's the thing! Oh, so beautiful. Beautiful, luxurious. Oh. So then I just get this tail and sew it to here. The butt. Sew it to the butt. Ba 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 Alright, so what we've got here is the mask, blowtorch for cleaning up edges and melting things, some super glue, sandpaper. This is a mixture of, it's dirty ABS plastic mixed with acetone. So what I need is a bit more acetone to pour in here. And then I will also start combining this white ABS just to make a bit more. And this will be the juicy goop that I use to paint over the top of the entire the mask. Because it's a bit dirty, I don't mind because I want it to have a more natural dirty look to the mask anyway. Just start popping some of this plastic in there now so it can start melting down. The acetone evaporates out of the plastic, just leaving the plastic behind. And that's what bonds really well <laughs> to the uh, skull mask. Melting this down with acetone won't work because PLA plastic does not melt when in contact with acetone. But ABS does. So I've got these selected, selected few failed prints of ABS just sitting here for adding to this mix. <laughs> Oopsies. We'll just fix that back up. Using my blowtorch, I've gone around the skinny parts. So this part, this part, and the top here. I've heated them all up, and then I've just kind of stretched them out a little bit. So I've made it wider in here by pulling out this way, this way, and then making this part stretch out a little bit. So now, when I put it on, my head fits perfectly inside. It's so cool! <laughs> We're having the teeth here. Whoosh vision impaired. What I'm going to be doing is lining the inside of the head with fur so that the fur will come through here's the front the fur will come through the sides so it'll be kind of like it's hard to see because uh, I have to look up no that'll look great right so I'm in the middle of dyeing my hair but here are the fangs all printed and here is the skull so this is how big they're going to look they are I don't want to jam these up in here yet because once I click them in they won't come out can you tell? It's got the little these pinched together. And then they fit into here and then they expand. So once you click it, they ain't coming out. So I'm just gonna put it up to it. Those are some big fingers. I'm just gonna give this its first coating of acetone and ABS. New bottle of acetone. So I'm just gonna pour some of that in there. Oops. <laughs> Drip it all over my leg. It's cold! 
Mmm, mix. Yum, 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 yum. Now for assembling the teeth. Wow. Let's just see if it pinches. Mm, feels like it does. Yep, looks like it should fit in there. Yep, but before I slide it all the way in, I'll quickly squirt some glue in there just to make sure everything attaches super super. Permanently. <coughs> it go. Go. Might have to put some super glue down in these cracks here. And that'll help bond it even better. I just put on the second coat of plastic juice. So now he's got one layer of plastic juice. The dirty look, the dirty painting, I guess you can call it, that I did all over him, detailing. And then I just covered him again with more plastic juice to kind of seal the paint job in. But when you look down his nose, it looks really dark in there because I painted all along the inside. Yeah. Uh, this end here, actually, <laughs> I haven't painted over yet. I'm going to just quickly grab my blowtorch and smooth that out so you can't see the little logo. I want it to look more realistic. Sorry, maker, bot, or whatever it is that made this mask. Next part is gluing on the cape. So I'm going to grab this top part here and glue this on the inside of the mask so that the fur can, you can see the fur coming out on the inside see if I can just place it there for now. Look a bit of our mask. And then this will be having, well, it's got big gashes in it because I have the hand sew in the arrows. But when it is done, I will put a button here. And these two pieces will button together like this. Now I'm gonna blow a blowtorch at it. Yeah. Oh, for that bit. Since it's so hot, the acetone should evaporate it off really quickly.
here's the first arm. You can see the skull over here. And this runs down, down, down to the first little arm part. I've marked with a little white dot uh, on both sides to make sure that they're on the same sort of spot. And we're just going to be connecting, I mean, yeah, sewing on these little doodakis. I'm just gonna go ahead and machine sew over this part really quickly on all four of them. <laughs> I'm just gonna tie the little turquoise feathers around this part and the fur. But I have to cut the zip fur first to make a little holes. Make it a little holes. And thread it through one way and out to the next. Three knots. There. That looks pretty cool. I also want to add these ones. These ones. And I'm thinking I will put them maybe a bit more closer to the front, like here. And I might just trim away some of this excess string. Okay. <clears throat> now this front one, I think I want to put this guy here too. I wonder if I can put them together. Cause it's cooler to be unsymmetrical. <laughs> Pretty gems. <laughs> There's only one more thing left to do on this, and that is to sew in the little arrows that I cut out. Where are they? These little guys. <laughs> um, not sure if I'm going to have time to do it now, so I might hand sew them on the way up to Kiwi Room, and then I'll wear this around and show you what it looks like when I get back, because I'm running out of time. It's 10.30 now, we go in the morning at like 8 o'clock, so I need to finish off packing.